this is Coogan Cassius Rye from London. We're at the Memorial Hall at Sheffield City Hall. Is that right, Dave? In Sheffield. Inside. With me, with me I have promoter, former boxer, trainer, manager. Um, what else are you? Father. Leonard Ellaby lookalike. Dave Caldwell. What's happening, Dave? I'm all right, mate. Yeah? Yeah, busy. Um, been an interesting time. It's good. It's all good. It's been a bit of an interesting time, hasn't it, for you? Um, let's just talk about what's been happening recently with you. Um, this whole Derry Matthews thing, which was a bit of a shock to everyone. Let's talk about that. That's done. Why? No, no, but I haven't spoke to you. Oh, really? Yeah, of course. All right. No, listen, it is what it is. You just come to terms, like, was you a bit shocked by it? What happened? Um, yeah, I was shocked because of the way that I found out. Um, not shocked not shocked in what is what he's had to do for his own career and anything I'm just shocked by by the way that I found out um, I was in a meeting with uh, with Spencer Fern my business partner and, and somebody else about something and um, my phone's on the desk and all of a sudden I'm getting text messages and it's Chris Walker who works for us as our media guy and uh, one or two other people just text have you seen Twitter have you seen Twitter look at Derry's Twitter uh, look at um, Twitter about Derry or blah 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 so, so I went onto Twitter and I saw um, Phil Kirkbride at the Echo. I saw his tweet um, just saying that Derry had signed with Queensbury Promotions um, in a f- I don't know how many fight deal or whatever. But just just the tweet that, that Phil put out and um, I was like, really? I was like, oh, okay. And um, that's how I found out. That was the only, that's the only thing that that I was pissed off about. To be honest, uh, I were not really pissed off about anything else. Um, other than a couple of things that have been said, like um, uh, he sent out an, uh, another release where he said that his, um, the reason why he left was because he uh, he wanted to box on television more. We had four fights with us. Um, his last three were on live on Sky. So that just it's not about that. It's not about that. It's if he got the best deal that he can get, then fair play to him. That's not. That's all that needs to be said. He got a better deal. He got you know he got a deal that he can't turn down for his family. And I totally respect that. I totally understand that because he's at a stage in his career where he's got to do what's best for him, yeah. and he's got uh, he's got to provide for his family. He's got to provide for his family. Give give them the best stability for the future because you know, for for Derry, you know. He, he could go on and, and win t- more titles, or he could he could get beat. He's he's done that all the way through his career, and at that stage, when you've had you know fights that are hard and you've had a long career, then um, you've you know you've got to you've got to look at cashing in. And and if he's if he's done that, then fair enough, it's not a problem. But um, I mean, Derry wasn't actually signed to no, as such, no, wasn't he? he? So we we came down, we agreed. He says that you know um, we agreed that I was going to look after him now and promote him, um, and. We did a good job, you know. He uh, after the prize fight, a job. Listen, let's not make no bones about it. If he was, if he was um, in demand or you know at, at such a great stage in his career, he wouldn't have come to me and asked me to look after his career. He'd have gone to Eddie. He'd have gone to Frank. He'd have gone to Francis. He'd have gone to Maloney. He'd have gone to whoever that's whoever's got television, all right, and said. I want to sign with you, blah, 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 and he'd have signed with them. But he didn't, so he'd come to me, um, we got him um, a great little comeback fight uh, on our Manchester show where he, he did the kidding around. And then on the back of that, got him a Commonwealth title shot. And, you know, and that's from there, you know, from there on in, it's all, all gravy and it's all good. You know, I'm not, I'm not under no illusions that you know, he comes to me because I'm the best out there, and and you know, for him, I was the best out there at the time, and and I filled a niche in his career, and and that was it. It would have been nice to have had a phone call and said, "Hey, Dave, uh, been offered this off of Queensbury, can't turn it down. It's fantastic." And I said, "Congratulations, mate. Well done. We did a fucking good job, didn't we, together?" And and happy days. I'm happy with what we what what. I did for Derry in his career. I'm happy, and and that's why I'm. It's not. I'm not bitter about it. it doesn't. It's not. Um, it's not a thing where I'm upset about. It. I was upset about the way that I found out at the time, 
um, and and that was it because I was always under the understanding because his trainer Danny Vaughan was always saying oh, he's, he can't fight before Christmas he needs a rest this 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 blah blah I was like alright ok fair enough so I thought, we'll leave it until you know, we'll leave it until after when when I was sat ringside watching Kevin Mitchell on Eddie's show at the O2 Derry was texting me about the opponent that Eddie that, that um, Kevin was fighting and we were talking about it because obviously Derry had said to me he wanted big, <coughs> uh, he wanted big fights out there and he wanted Mitchell blah blah so we was talking about that but I'd said to Ed you got no chance of getting before Christmas we'll talk, we'll see about it for you know for the new year I think I think I mentioned you know possibly March um, so uh, that was it I left it didn't think there was anything else because Derry didn't want to fight before Christmas or Danny didn't want to fight before Christmas Derry would fight tomorrow <coughs> The kid's a hundred percent warrior, and you know he, he he just loves fighting. But the, you know he, you know Danny was texting as well. I agreed with him. It, was, it wasn't about fighting again before Chris. It was the training that he's going through. You know, and, and Danny said, you know, the train is going through. That's what's wearing him out, and he needs to, you know, he needs to have a rest before Chris uh, for Christmas. He's going away. He's get he's getting married. Blah 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 blah. Fair enough. So that was it. So fighting December seventh, I was like again. I was like, oh really? Fair enough. So, you know, it, 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 you've got to look at finances and Derry will go with whatever's the best he can get or he thinks he can get at the time financially. And if they're putting a, a great deal for him, then you can't knock him for taking it. Have you spoke to him since? No, I, um, I tried ringing him after, um, after it broke. No answer. Um, then he, then he texts me uh, a few hours after later saying I'll, I'll, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm mis- sorry, Miss Call. I'll uh, I'll give you a call in an hour or so. Never got a call, so that's it. It's no fallout. It's just it's just yeah. gone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. End of the day, listen. Like I said, boxing is a business ultimately, and it's, it's, listen, end of people day. got to do what they got to do. Yeah, ex- exactly. At the end of the day, I don't work with Derry Matthews anymore, but I've got plenty of fighters that I do work with, and they're the ones that I'm bothered about. I'm not, you know, once if a fighter's with us. Then that's who I have to focus my energy onto and and worry about and 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 be bothered about. If the fighter's not with us, then good luck to him. And and you know, but it's got nothing to do with me now. It's got nothing to do with me whatsoever. Whether you know whether it, what what path he takes now or anything. You know, I've got other fighters to look after. And and in Liverpool, I've got some great talent coming through. You know, people like Robbie Davis Jr. and look, Junior Jones. You know, we've got we've got kids coming through in Liverpool that I'm excited about. That in a few years' time, they'll be packing out venues in in Liverpool. Please God, you know, I, I work with Tony Bellew. You know, he's got a world title fight coming up. I've got to worry about our fighters, or fighters that I'm associated, with, fighters that I work with. You know, um, and and that and that's all that I've got time for, really. Okay. Um, your next show, 22nd of November, day before Frotch and Groves in Manchester. Oh, so, so no one's got an excuse. If you're going to Frotch and Groves, you've got yeah. no excuse some, not some to hotels, come to your show. I believe, uh, some of the hotels, I believe, I, I, I think Crown Plaza, um, the people are booked in there for Friday and Saturday. It's not just a Saturday. So if they're up there Friday and Saturday for, um, for Frotch Groves, come along to Bowlers because it's going to be bouncing. It really is going to be bouncing. I mean, the atmosphere on the last one was was unbelievable, but you know, with this one, we've got um, obviously John Murray on. You know, um, Mark Efron's been added onto it. Liam Anran against um, uh, against Jamie Spitz, a great a great step up for Liam. You know, Liam brings you know 160 fans every time he fights. You've got a feeling that this one's going to be more. Jimmy Kelly Jr. is a great prospect from from uh, Manchester. Um, I expect him to be fighting for a, a British title. You know. Um, Back in the next year, maybe even. Um, Ryan Doyle's a great prospect at Super Bantamweight. Uh, he's ready for for you know uh, an English title shot now. Next next year, I would imagine he'll be ready. You know to to be fighting for the British. He's a good fighter. So you know we've we got a lot of good good fighters on there. A lot of good names on there. Um, and it's going to be bouncing. And there might be another. Uh, we're just working on it at the moment. There might be another big name that gets added onto there. So you know it's all it's all good. You're right. Just, just a quick word. Bobby Rimmer just Bobby walked. Rimmer. Bobby Rimmer can do it. Um, just a quick word now on uh, obviously why we're here. Uh, Kel Brook against uh, Vyacheslav Sinchenko. Vyacheslav. 
Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Or if right. you don't know. Vyacheslav. Okay. Yeah, I spoke to his mum the other day, and that's what she told me. So. Good English? Yeah, very good English. I'm only joking. Um, this is make or break for Kel Brook in a kind of way. Yeah, I think he'll, I think he'll, he'll make him. I think he'll look a million dollars, to be honest. I think the guy's too slow for him not to get countered to death off a of Kel. I think Kel's, you know, Kel's like razor blades, and he'll, he'll just um, count him to death early on. And I think if if Kel's in a good place mentally regarding his fitness, then I can see him breaking him up really quickly, possibly stopping him in the first half of the fight. However, if he puts his foot on the pedal and then issues you know, regarding his stamina do arise, this guy's still there. He's one of them that will just keep chugging away, chugging away, and then you know, during the middle course of the fight, it could get tricky. You don't know. It's, it, it's, it's a, it depends on which Kel Brook we've got. You know, from all reports, I think he's going to be on fire. Um, from what I'm hearing, um, so I think it, I think it's going to be a great night for him, and it puts him, you know, it puts him up there. It'd be a great win for him. It's definitely the biggest test for his career, um, and and the the guy's quite a big lump as well. So that that might um, might be interesting. Uh, you know, how, how Kel finds a range as well. So, but I, I expect him to do a number on him. Brian Rose fight, great fight by the way. Yeah, eliminator, one of Eddie's eliminators, yeah. but wins it and he's there. I oh, know. Listen, I oh, know. If an eliminator, if an eliminator gets you into a manager position, then go for it. Eliminate leads to a final eliminator. People, people have got to remember that there's a difference between an eliminator and a final eliminator. So that's why they see the word eliminator, and then the next one they see the final eliminator. They think, oh, what are you doing all these eliminators for? It's not. Final eliminator gets you that shot. And that's what it's about. Unconditional, no ties, a manager position shot. Thanks for clearing that up, Dave. Oh, some like, people like, don't know but that's what I mean people, people don't know so they just see that and think oh, what's all these eliminators about but would you like to sign three, five, six options away to another promoter and then box whoever they say away on somebody else's shows or would you like to defend your titles on your own shows in your own town under your you know under your own, own options I know which one I'd do yeah, I know which one I'd do as well if I was a promoter Right, Dave, uh, thanks for talking to IFL TV. IFL, of course, IFL. I forgot about that. You might have introduced it as IFL from London. I'm sure you did. It's going to take some getting used to it. Yeah, yeah, did it yesterday as well. But IFL TV, renamed. This is my first interview with IFL TV. It's, uh, it's been all right. Listen, we've had, we've had to do it, so I'll explain in another interview why, but we've had to do it. It's done, some people don't like it. I change. don't really care. A lot of people don't like change. Every time I see someone doesn't like it, I'm going to change the name. You change your name every, every on Twitter. You change your name every 33 hello. seconds. Hello. Hello. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. So um, yeah, so IFL TV will uh, be at your next show in Manchester on the 22nd. You have, yeah, you have got no excuse because you can't. You don't need a train. Doesn't get stranded. There's no, there's no horses that are going to get on a on a rail track for you, are there? So you can't actually miss that show. Around the corner from the hotel. Right. Well, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV, and uh, press conference is just about to start, and we'll catch up with you soon. See you soon. Cheers, mate. Thanks. Coogan Cassius here with Dave Caldwell for IFL TV. Thank you very much.